taxpayers on the hook for this Ash Street deal, but you could decide its fate. Plus, local and state leaders take action in the wake of the Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe versus Wade. They've been saying the homeless people in this area have been getting more aggressive, and now one is charged with murder. Five days of driving an electric car, how we charge it, including while on a road trip. And at the Alley R Wall in Carlsbad, spray painting is not a crime. In fact, it's encouraged. CBS 8 News Live at 6 starts now. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Carla Cicchetto. I'm Marcella Lee. With millions of your taxpayer dollars on the line, today the San Diego City Council decided to wait to decide if it will approve the mayor's Ash Street settlement deal. CBS 8's Anna Laurel is downtown tonight with the latest. Anna? We're talking about this building here behind me. You can see it as you drive into downtown. It's that large white building with a huge American flag on top. For the past six years, it's only been occupied for about two weeks because of asbestos contamination. But the city, and really you, the taxpayer, are on the hook for millions in this real estate deal. One thing we do know in San Diego is you don't spend $86 million for a $67 million building. Thank you for coming. That's just one of the things that critics and attorneys who oppose the mayor's Ash Street settlement deal say doesn't add up. This is a bad deal. You don't double down on a bad deal. In the settlement agreement, they admit that they can't even say that they can occupy the building. In 2015 and 2016, the city signed lease to own deals for the Ash Street building and Civic Center Plaza. Last week, the mayor announced a settlement to end years of costly litigation over the Ash Street deal. This process has been well informed, highly deliberative, and at its core, designed to minimize risks to taxpayers. In the settlement, the city would buy the two properties outright for $132 million. The mayor appears to want to uh, raid the budget, raid the city's funds to pay for a building that has virtually no value. That's taking money from other things that the city so desperately needs. Today, the city attorney reiterated she opposes the deal and city council delayed the public hearing on whether to approve it. Mayor Todd Gloria must have heard voters who say they want more information. We have heard clearly that the public should be given more time to review the proposed settlement agreement in its entirety. Attorneys for one of the lawsuits against the city will ask a judge Wednesday if they can move forward with a trial date to take this deal out of the hands of politicians. The city taxpayers have a right to vote on these types of debts and to take that away from the taxpayer once to then do it twice that would be shameful. In San Diego for CBS 8, I'm Anna Laurel. All right, Anna, thanks. The city has already spent $32 million in renovations at Ash and is on the hook for more than $100 million more to make it safe for anyone to occupy it. San Diego police confirm to CBS 8 tonight that a man arrested for a murder in Rolando had been living on the streets. We've reported on the homelessness problem in the neighborhood before, and the people who live there say it's getting worse. Our Steve Price is working for you and found some residents who are ready to get the city working for them. Neighbors have been complaining about violent homeless people around here for months. Now police tell us that Dr. Kelly's killer lived on the streets and working for you. We discovered that suspect is no stranger to police. They've been sending us pictures of the homeless situation in their Rolando neighborhood going from bad to worse, begging for help. Crimes on the rise and then earlier this month, their worst fear became a reality. A beloved veterinarian killed. Police say 88-year-old Clark Kelly walked in on a burglar they've identified as Patrick O'Brien, who lives on the streets and has a long criminal history. In fact, we found court records show a criminal charge filed against him just a week before Dr. Kelly's murder. We are tired of it. We are really tired of it. Jennifer Spencer says her tenants who lived here for nine years finally said enough is enough. Homeless people coming in, harassing them, so they moved. She says her tenant called the police for one guy who passed out in the middle of the road, but that didn't go so well. The police came out. They were angry at him for calling them out for a drunk person falling in the middle of the street. What do you want to do, wait till they get murdered? And then you call them out? I mean, that's ridiculous. Neighbors have also sent countless pictures to the city through the Get It Done app and emailed their council member, but they say that all goes nowhere. 
oh, we're passing it on to someone else, and then they'll get in touch with you. Nah, never happens. It's passing the buck. This area's elected representative is Council President Sean Ela Rivera, so we contacted his office. They sent us a statement today sending their condolences to Dr. Kelly's family and friends and acknowledging that the homeless problem here has gotten worse, but added that last month they held an outreach with several agencies. During that outreach, 125 individuals along El Cajon Boulevard were contacted and 41 people were provided health care, shelter, housing referrals, and transport to hospital. But people in the area say there's never any follow-up to these outreach events. They hope this time is different. Help us clean up the streets. Help us protect our neighbors here in Rolando. It's what your job is if you can't do your job there's always an election to take care of that. Patrick O'Brien pleaded not guilty at his arraignment last week. He faces several felony charges, including first degree murder, and will be back in court later this week. In Rolando, Steve Price, CBS 8. Thank you, Steve, and don't forget here at CBS 8, we're always working for you. If there's an issue you'd like us to look into, email us at workingforyou at cbs8.com. In Missouri tonight, a crash between an Amtrak and a dump truck killed three people and injured dozens of others. The passenger train was heading from Los Angeles to Chicago when it hit the dump truck at a crossing in a small town northeast of Kansas City. Seven cars derailed after the crash at the rural intersection. It had, no gra it had gravel with no crossing arms. A Missouri State Highway Patrol spokesman says more than 40 people were taken to hospitals. 243 passengers and 12 crew were on board the train. Two of those killed were on board the train. The third person was in the truck. A $300 million super yacht owned by a Russian oligarch and seized by the U.S. is docked here in San Diego right now. The Amadea arrived at the National City Marine Terminal today after being seized in Fiji last month. The yacht is four stories high, as you can see right there, 348 feet long. That's longer than a football field. It now has an American flag flying on board. The DOJ says the ship will remain in the U.S. custody until its forfeiture and sale are finalized. Local and state leaders are on both sides weighing in following the U.S. Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe versus Wade. And soon, so will California voters when it comes to adding the right to an abortion to the state constitution. CBS 8's Dana Marie McNichol has more tonight from the County Administration Building. Frustration, anger, and disbelief. These were the words I heard over and over again this morning at a press conference where San Diego elected leaders shared their continued fight for reproductive health care. Now, 26 of them signed this letter stating that they do support the California Senate in making an amendment to our Constitution to support abortions. I'm furious for millions of women and people nationwide who will now be living in a reality that does not include the right to control a critical medical decision about their very own body. A decision that should only be between a patient and their health care provider. Let me be crystal clear. That right is protected here in California. And my colleagues behind me, thank you. Thank you. And I are ensuring that the fundamental right to abortion and contraception will be protected by our state constitution. That was Tony Atkins, Senate President Pro Tem, who says the goal of this constitutional amendment number 10 would prohibit the state from denying or interfering with a person's reproductive freedom in their most intimate decisions, their fundamental right to choose to have an abortion, as well as their fundamental right to choose or refuse contraceptives. That's according to the text from the amendment. Now, today's goal for these elected leaders was to demonstrate unity and solidarity with people who are in despair across the nation while making a vow to defend the right to reproductive health care. Mayor Todd Gloria also addressed San Diego and the importance of men stepping up and fighting as well. If there is no federal law, rulings or regulations that give government the power to make decisions about a man's body. So as men, we have to understand that fighting for women's rights is fighting for the future of our country, and now is the time to fight. Today in Sacramento, the State Assembly is expected to vote on this constitutional amendment. Now, in order to pass, it does need to receive a two-thirds approval before June 30th. That's the deadline to put this measure on the November ballot. I'm Dana Marie McNichol, coming to you from downtown San Diego for CBS 8. And late this afternoon, that measure was passed, so that will go on the November ballot. Our political reporter Morgan Reiner will have more on that proposed amendment to the state constitution also coming up later tonight in our second half hour.
Meantime, trigger laws are taking effect in other states as law enforcement remains on high alert nationwide following a weekend of protests. As Natalie Brand tells us, new legal challenges are also rising following the Supreme Court's historic ruling. Protesters returned to the U.S. Supreme Court for a fourth straight day after the conservative majority sent the issue of abortion back to individual states. Abortion rights! Abortion rights! More than a dozen have so-called trigger laws in place to restrict or ban abortion since Roe v. Wade was overturned, with several more states expected to follow suit in the coming weeks. Mississippi, the state at the heart of the case that led to the Supreme Court's ruling that struck down Roe, certified its trigger law Monday, banning nearly all abortions in 10 days. But in Louisiana, a civil district court judge has already temporarily blocked the state's trigger laws from taking effect after providers sued. As a new legal fight begins, Democratic leaders believe the issue of abortion will become key for upcoming midterm elections for the U.S. Congress and at the state level. Vice President Harris on CNN. We need to change the balance and have pro-choice legislators who have the power to make decisions about whether this constitutional right will be in law. I think this is likely to all be litigated out, dealt with in the various states around the country through the Democratic process. Meanwhile, leaders in blue states like New York are preparing for a possible influx of women from states with restrictions. They've been preparing on how do we build the infrastructure so we're here for those women who come into the city for looking for services. 16 Democratic states and Washington, D.C. have laws to protect abortion rights. Natalie Brent, CBS News, Washington. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says legislation to protect women's privacy and right to travel, as well as a bill to make Roe versus Wade national law, are being considered. But Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell says an abortion rights bill is unlikely to get the required 60 votes to pass the Senate. Planned Parenthood has announced it's filed legal challenges to block trigger laws in several states, including Idaho, Utah, and Kentucky.